On May 30, 2024, President Donald J. Trump was convicted on 34 criminal charges, dealing with a porn queen and a paperwork mishandling exposing him to up to 136 years in prison if the charges are not run consecutively. This happened in a corrupt city where criminal illegal migrants are allowed to beat up old people and police with no penalties. Are you cheering that justice has been done, or are you seeing inequalities in the way that Donald Trump and people around him are being treated by the judicial court system? If you perceive even a bit of injustice, you need to search a little deeper and maybe somewhere else for answers. Only when you have both sides of a story can you make an informed decision. That's the foundation of our justice system, though one of the most high-profile cases ever gagged Donald Trump both outside and inside the courthouse by the suppression of his witnesses. Trump was allowed two defense witnesses to the prosecution's 20 witnesses. Ask yourself if you'd think that was fair if you were at the defense table. It can happen to the finest, upstanding and good people, and every time a precedent of injustice is set, we lose more and more of our freedoms. So Trump is a felon, but what happened to Hillary Clinton in her dealings with trying to change the results of a federal election? I am speaking of the $113,000 that Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign and the Democratic National Committee, DNC, agreed to pay to settle just one year ago related to a Federal Election Commission investigation into whether they violated campaign finance law by misreporting spending on research that eventually became the Steele dossier. Wait, did I miss this? Have you ever heard of this? Was there a trial aired on every news station? Was anyone booked with a mugshot and perp walk? Did anyone get convicted of a felony carrying punishments of up to 136 years in prison for this election finance crime? In case you don't recall, Hillary Clinton paid a Russian operative for a report alleging that Trump was in a hotel room with prostitutes and had them urinating on him. Yep, I'm sure you heard the filth that was all over the news about Trump. But did you ever stick around to see if it was true or not? Christopher Steele is a former British intelligence officer and the author of The Steele Dossier. Steele served in the British Secret Intelligence Service, MI6, and worked extensively on Russian affairs during his career. After retiring from MI6, he co-founded Orbis Business Intelligence, a private intelligence firm. The Steele dossier is a collection of reports compiled by Steele in 2016, which was the seed planted for the Russia conspiracy that Trump was allegedly involved with. These reports detail allegations of misconduct, conspiracy, and cooperation between Donald Trump's presidential campaign and the Russian government. The $113,000 dossier was paid for initially by a conservative website and later by the Democratic National Committee, DNC, and Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign. Steele's reports included claims of Russian efforts to cultivate and support Trump, allegations of compromising material on Trump held by the Russians, and detailed supposed connections between Trump's campaign team and Russian operatives. The dossier played a significant role in sparking a lengthy and expensive investigations into Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election and connections between Trump's campaign and Russia, at your expense. Remember the Robert Mueller Russian interference trial? Yet nobody ever paid for these harassing and unfounded trials. Nobody went to jail. There wasn't even a prosecution of Hillary, Mueller, Steele, or any of the other players in this expensive and damaging sham. In case you don't know, the claims in the dossier have been scrutinized and found to be completely unfounded. Clinton's representatives allege that the dossier was opposition research and totally legal. Research implies that the information is true. So how can anyone use campaign money to create lies about your candidate and call it research? And if the Steele dossier was truly research, why did the Democratic Party pay hush funds of $113,000 in fines to the Election Commission if everything was legal? As the term opposition research implies, they were looking for dirt on an opponent. At that time, the opponent was presidential candidate Donald J. Trump, just like now. I'm not here to tell you what to think. These are the facts as I have found them, and I am happy for others to research the info. Each person will have a different perspective hopefully, because hive mind is never a good thing for society. There are many people who fled authoritarian regimes, and they know what they are looking at under Biden. Perhaps you are young and have never experienced true governmental suppression. Maybe you're not a history buff. I'm not. But the decisions you make today go beyond an egotistical need for attention, love, or a sense of belonging. 
They affect everyone you love for generations to come. So, decide where you want to put your precious life force energy and decide to heal or be unhappy forever. A critical component of a civil society is that all people be treated equally. Till next time, strive to look into the mirror and see the best person you can be.